Newsflash! Ecosystems are incredibly interconnected. Okay, we've already talked a lot about that, and we've talked about how the addition of a new species or a limiting factor can dramatically alter the ecosystem. So then, what happens when an entire area of land is wiped out by a natural disaster? Like, what happens when there's a volcanic eruption or a hurricane or a forest fire? Such destruction would require the rebuilding of the ecosystem from square one, and this is called ecological succession. There are two types of ecological succession, primary and secondary, the differences of which we are discussing in the next video. But the differences aside, they follow general patterns. So the first organisms to inhabit a destroyed area are usually carried over by the wind. And these first organisms are generally spore-bearing plants because spores are lighter and easier to carry with the wind. Once these organisms settle in, they're generally replaced by annual plants and then replaced by grasses and then shrubs and eventually trees. So the final community that emerges is called the climax community. And the different species that inhabit this community are determined by physical factors like temperature, soil type, and rainfall. So for example, if you were to have a really dry environment where ecological succession occurs, the final community would be a lot different from if ecological succession occurred in a really moist environment. So the general time frame for ecological succession from start to finish is approximately 1,000 years. Don't forget, ecological succession can also happen in aquatic environments.